All right, we can solve this algebraically. Um, I think it's gonna be time consuming. I think it's gonna be a pain in the neck and have a high chance of error. So now that we have a graphing calculator for every question on the section, what I would do is just enter this into my graphing calculator and see what happens. Now, because it's just one equation with only x's, it's, it's gonna look weird when we graph it. So I just, I took the time to enter it already for you. And um, notice what's happening is those lines look pretty straight. And maybe you're thinking, well, okay, if it's solutions, then maybe it's a quadratic and maybe it curves at some point. We just, I could zoom out and I could see it curve. No, that's not gonna happen because there's no y. If it was like y equals x times x plus one minus 56, then that would be a, a parabola. And we could kind of split this if we wanted to, put a y equals in front of each half of the equation and then see the parabolas interacting. But I think that that's even more confusing. Basically, we just need to understand what's happening here, what our calculator is doing for us. It is just solving the equation. So it's graphing it, but it is solving it basically like you know the computer. Maybe you have some one of those apps on your phone where you take a picture of the equation and it just solves it for you. That's what's happening here basically. I entered it and it's giving me these two vertical lines which represent the two solutions. So I can tap the points literally anywhere since they're vertical lines but it, it gives them to me on the x-axis and we can see 2.667 and seven. And the, the zero doesn't matter, right? Again, I can move up and down this, ugh, this line. Normally it lets me do that but it's not letting me do it here, it's fine. So the seven and the 2.667 are what matters. Those are in the x position so those are the x values, those are my solutions. So what does that mean for my answer? Well, 2.667 plus seven is 9.667. They are asking for the sum. So in theory, yeah, this is it. And this would be an acceptable answer, but it makes me really, really nervous because the way that these kind of student produced response questions work, when it's a messy decimal, something that goes on and on forever, like a, a, a two thirds in this case, um, you have to be exact about how you enter it. And there are instructions included on every one of these that tells you how to do it, but I, I think it's confusing. And so my advice is maybe just try to turn this back into a fraction. And that's really easy when it's 0.667 or 0.333, right? I mean, we know that that is just a third or two thirds and we can kind of manipulate it back. And I would much rather enter this as a fraction because then I don't need to worry about rounding or worry about how many spaces I'm taking up. Basically, you need to take up every single space. So if it is a positive number, that is your answer. If your answer is a positive number, you're going to use five places, five items, I guess, to enter your answer. And we have that here, okay? It's very annoying. Let me get this out of the way here. We have the one, the nine is one, the decimal point is two, the six is three, the other six is four, and the seven is five. The reason this is confusing is that if it's a negative number, then for whatever reason, the SAT is gonna give you one extra space. And so you're gonna have a space for the negative, And so it's six total. And I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me why it's inconsistent. It's just very confusing. So my advice is let's turn this into fractions. So the seven luckily stays a seven, yay. This, the 2.667, my brain instantly is just like, okay, that's two and two thirds. And so this calculator that I have allows me to enter stuff like that, but I can't enter that into the student produced responses. So I have to convert this into a, an into a improper fraction. So two and two thirds would be, uh, you do three times two is six plus two is eight. So that's eight thirds. And then I'm gonna do, okay, seven would be 21 thirds. So eight thirds and 21 thirds, I don't need the calculator, is 29 thirds. So that's something else you could enter here, 29 thirds. You could also enter 9.666 because you don't have to round it. You can just, what's called truncating it, just drop the remaining digits because the six goes on forever. So you could just drop it here. But this is why this is so confusing to me. My preference would be for 29 thirds. And just to confirm that I did all that fraction work right, 29 divided by three is 9.667. Maybe you can see it. So there you go. Look, this is an annoying thing, 
uh, if you practice, you will encounter this, and maybe at some point you will get a question wrong on a practice test because you don't use the student-produced response boxes effectively for a weird fraction with thirds or sixths or something else that kind of you know repeats. Um, if it's uh, bothering you, then maybe just get in the habit of doing what I do and returning everything back to fractions. It's safer. It doesn't involve you know any sort of um, rounding or truncating or dealing with any of the weirdness of it. I think it's a mistake that the SAT made with all this, but unfortunately we have to live with that mistake. So just get in the habit of understanding the rules and you shouldn't lose any points for something like misbubbling, misentering. Uh, this is still a difficult question. Um, without the calculator, I will show you how to do it. Um, we just need to do some algebra. So let's see here. Let's, um, let's bring this equation down. So uh, I'm going to first distribute, so that's going to be x squared plus x minus 56, distribute again, equals 4x squared minus 28x. I'm going to bring all my stuff to one side. If I have a quadratic, I want everything on one side, so let's subtract x squared, let's subtract x, let's add 56, subtract x squared, subtract x, uh, add 56. We're going to get 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 29x plus 56. Uh, see, I, this is why I don't like doing this with the um, annoying um, quadratic. Now I have to slide and divide. So that what that means is I'm going to hope that if I move this 3 over to here by multiplying, I can factor the resulting better equation. So that's going to be x squared minus 29x. 56 times 3 is 168. And now I need to figure out factors. Oh, this is so annoying. It's going to be a plus and a minus. I don't know what multiplies to 168. Does anybody? All right, but whatever they are, it's going to be a pretty big difference of 29. Let's do maybe 168 divided by 4. 42. 4 times 42. That's eh, not going to get me 29. Maybe let's do 168 divided by 8. So uh, 8 and 21. So actually, nope, I was wrong before. It's two negatives. So that's going to work. Minus 8, minus 21. 8 and 21 adds to 29. 8 times 21 multiplies to 168. But because I slid that 3 out of the way before to make it easier to factor, I have to divide it back out. So what that means now is I divide both of these by 3. And you can see if I do that where my numbers came from before. This is x minus 8 thirds. I could move that 3 to the front, but I'm going to leave it there. But 21 divided by 3 can become x minus 7. Um, and so there you go. That's, that's kind of where this comes from. Like I said, the other way to write it would be 3x minus 8 and x minus 7. Um, and so that's probably the way your teacher would do it. But in terms of finding x values, this one would do it. It would get me x is equal to 8 thirds x is equal to 7, and that is exactly what we had before, or I should do it more like this, 8 thirds and 7, 8 thirds and 7. It's a mess. It's a mess. I think no matter what, you're dealing with some difficult ideas for a question like this, whether it's going the algebra route or whether it's doing the, the calculator and just understanding what the calculator is giving you and what you're supposed to do with that answer. So it's difficult in lots of different ways, but I think the calculator is more reliable in the long run, so try to get used to that.